And let's bring right now Republican presidential nominee, Senator John McCain. Senator, mm -hmm. very good talking to you this morning. Hi, Senator. Hey, Joe. Hi, Mika. I've got a question for you, Senator. Yeah, um, real tough. Do you support the Bush Doctrine? <laughs> and there is a two-part question. Please, yes. in your essay, yes. compare the Bush Doctrine to the Truman Doctrine. Yes, no, please. no quizzes like that. Uh, <laughs> how's it going out on the campaign trail for you? Uh, it's fine. There's a lot of enthusiasm out here. Uh, obviously, uh, Governor Palin has... Uh, ignited a real uh, spark out there and we're doing fine we're pleased at the progress we have made and we've got a long way to go and i know that what you want to talk about this morning is this uh, crisis we're in and it's a terrible situation uh... and we need to fix it and we need to fix it. this is a breakdown not only in our economy but in confidence uh, on the part of americans and americans are hurting very badly well, you've been attacked, obviously, for saying the fundamentals of this economy mm -hmm. are, uh, the, the fundamentals are strong. There's an ad out this morning. Um, you said that you're talking about the workers, but obviously, as you know, gas prices are up. Housing starts are way oh, yeah. down. Uh, yeah. Wall Street's yeah. melting down. Yeah. What, other than workers, what fundamentals are you talking about? I was talking about the fundamentals of America, which is the workers, their productivity, their innovation, their, uh, their incredible performance for many, many years. And what I was saying is, and it's clear, uh, if you look at my remarks, and that is that Wall Street has betrayed us. They've broken the social contract between capitalism and the average citizen and the worker. And the workers are paying a very heavy price, while a lot of them are not only emerging unscathed, but some of them are left with packages of hundred million dollars or so. It's a, this, is a, this, is a, this is a result of excess and greed and corruption. And that's exactly what uh, is plaguing Americans today. And we've got to fix it, and we've got to update our regulatory system. We have to, I think, have a 9-11 commission to find out what went wrong and to, f and to fix what's going to happen in the future so this never, ever happens again. And as president, I guarantee you, it'll never happen again. You know, the, next, the, the last time Congress and the President tried to reform Wall Street, it was Sarbanes-Oxley. You talk to a lot of people, they'll tell mm -hmm. you that, that that made a lot of business leave New York and go over to the London markets. How do you thread the needle so you protect American consumers while keeping Wall Street and our financial sector very competitive in the global economy? Well, Joe, the first thing you do is you address this issue of the alphabet soup of regulatory agencies. It was designed for the 1930s. Now we have instantaneous uh, financial system that's global in nature, and it's not compartmentalized. Uh, look at the stock exchange today as to what it was even 20 or 30 years ago. So you've got to fix that. The, the, and also, very frankly, people were asleep at the switch. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And then, of course, we have to make sure that everyone's deposit uh, in a bank is uh, that they know that it's insured by the FDIC and that they're not in danger of losing that deposit. We've got a, we've got a confidence crisis here as well as a financial crisis. And finally, uh, again, we've got to make sure that people like Fannie and Freddie, uh, organizations such as Fannie and Freddie, never have the influence again that they had in Washington. You saw it, Joe, the old boy network, yeah. Republicans, Democrats, they, they had influence with everybody. So therefore, we didn't act to have the sufficient oversight while this, these organizations grew and, and grew and became the corrupt institutions that they are today. Uh, Senator, I want to ask you about uh, campaign ads. Do you think the Obama campaign ad, using your words about the fundamentals of the economy, do you think that ad was fair? Uh, I, it's not up to me, Mika, to, to, to make those kinds of judgments. I'll leave it up to the American people. I still say to you, and I know you're a supporter of Senator Obama, if you would urge him, if you would urge him to uh, come and do town hall meetings with me, as I've asked him to do time after time, the whole tenor of the campaign would change. Joe will tell you that when you stand on the stage with your opponent and listen to the American people and respond to them, that changes the whole campaign. Initially, he said, any time, any place. Now he refuses to do so. I don't think that's helpful to the American people or to the tenor of the campaign. 
supporter of Senator Obama. He's been listening I'm to me too much. Sure I, I, see, I got to stop poking I'd at you on that one. myself as that, no. but that's okay. Um, listen, Senator, the ad campaign. Um, that's out there. Let's talk about yours then, since you don't want to talk about the Obama campaign ads. There are some that maybe twist words are in the fair game of politics, but others that some would say are based on lies. I guess my question is, isn't how a candidate conducts their campaign a sign of how they will run the country, how they will lead? And how do you reconcile that? Well, go on our website. You'll find that every one of our campaign ads is factual. I hope I know you visit it often, <laughs> but uh, I think the point is that uh, these are factual. This is a tough campaign, and if you look frankly at the initial attacks, they began a long time ago by MoveOn.org and then by the DNC, and we've got that timeline there. But look. Uh, the American people are hurting right now, and they are much more worried about our campaign as far as fixing their problems and keeping them in their homes and getting the new jobs for them or keeping their old one. And that's what the focus of this campaign should be about. I know how to fix this economy. I've had great experience on economic issues as chairman of the Commerce Committee and being involved in these issues ever since we had spending restraint under Ronald Reagan. And so we've got to fix the economy and take care of the American people. That's what this okay, campaign's all that, about. Uh, that's fair. I think we should be talking about the issues. The question is, are some of these ads factually accurate? You say they are, Senator. Well, what, what about, for instance, the one that's got the most attention this week is a sex ad yeah. ad uh, that yeah. says that yeah. Barack Obama yeah. was interested in teaching sex ad to kindergartners, uh, teach them sex before mm -hmm. reading. Is, is that a fair ad? Mm -hmm. Read the language of the bill. Go on our website. That's exactly the language of the bill. <laughs> and I, I'm, very, I'm very grateful that that bill was rejected by the majority. All right. Very good. It's great Hi. talking to you. By the way, Mike Murphy uh, just dropped by. Uh, and uh, we don't, he's looking for a job, actually. We don't usually let him on set, but he looked destitute outside of the NBC studios. I, 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 I clean up around here <laughs> nights, and then I come in in the morning and do a little gas bag. How are you doing, Senator? I'm doing fine, Mike. Uh, one of my old and dearest friends, and uh, what really not only smart, but very, very entertaining. He is very entertaining. All right. Senator John McCain, thank you so much for and, being uh, with us. Senator, as a uh, characterized Barack Obama supporter, oh. I take objection to. I'll just say, take care of my brother working on your campaign. There say you go. Ian for me. Say hi to Ian. Take well, thank you, Mike. I'll defend you here. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks. That was a cheap shot. <laughs> no, no, it's early. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it.